Hello guys, good evening and welcome to Everything Metallurgy. So today I have uh, picked this particular question which is uh, typically asked by many of uh, you know you guys. So I thought why not make uh, a video. So maybe I'll try to pick few questions from the comments or you know few concepts that you want and uh, you know we will be making few videos and uh, first of all the dilemma regarding gate 2022 is uh, on hold as of now because the website uh, they have announced that there won't be any changes at least as of now uh, so let's hope for the best and uh, take all the necessary measures while traveling for examinations and stay safe so now moving on to the question itself so this is from uh, gate 2021 okay so this particular question is asked in the last year okay so it says the water flows over a plate of finite length at x equal to x1 from the leading edge the velocity of the flow is vx is equal to 0.5y minus 0.5 uh, y cube the thickness delta in meter of the boundary layer at x equal to x1 is how much so basically this is the image so what they are asking is they want the particular thickness this is the thickness delta so first of all let us try to understand what is this boundary layer thickness or what is boundary layer theory okay let us try to see that okay so from this we'll uh, try to understand how we can calculate the thickness of this particular boundary layer so if you have a fluid okay let's say water or any fluid for that sense if it is flowing you know we call this a free flow or we say free stream of the fluid right and this particular uh, free stream has the maximum velocity typically maximum velocity okay or let us call it free stream velocity okay now if it is actually flowing on a plate in this case they said that this is my plate you can see this okay so on this plate uh, this is the edge okay leading edge they have told right so from here you are actually allowing your fluid to flow on to this so what is happening you see that there is some boundary layer which is mentioned here okay so as i told you this free stream velocity here they have mentioned v infinity okay so this is coming from the source okay you can think of in this this way now because this fluid is actually flowing on my uh, surface okay so it, it can be anything right it is any solid surface okay now what happens is this creates a velocity gradient you can observe that there is a velocity gradient that is what is shown in the figure right so you can see the y axis is the velocity and the x axis is the distance itself and you see that there is a particular boundary layer which we will talk in a bit and you see that at a particular year x equal to x1 they said that if you move far from the plate you see that how the velocity is increasing and almost achieving my free stream velocity okay now two things first one what is the velocity at this point it is very much clear that at this particular point the velocity v will be equal to zero or or in other sense i can say the velocity of the fluid is equal to the velocity of the surface okay i'll better do this okay because here in this case this particular plate might move also right in this case of course it is a stationary plate because they did not mention anything but typically this particular plate may also move okay so that is the case why we take this but most of the cases this would be equal to what zero why because the surface itself is not moving that means the fluid velocity at this particular distance i can say at x equal to 0 this is the case and this is called as what is this called 
the condition may be I'll write it over here V fluid is equal to V surface which is equal to zero in this case this is called my no slip condition okay first one velocity at the plate where x equal to zero we have a no slip condition second case that you have to see is that there is a velocity gradient right so as you move away from your plate what is happening uh, uh, of course uh, i cannot say y x equal to zero but in this case it is y equal to zero right the vertical displacement is what you know you are swimming okay so i hope you are understanding right this is the direction in which the distance that we see correct so now that uh, what is happening along the y direction there is a velocity gradient okay and this velocity gradient you can see here is given as a function of y okay that is why v of y is given as 0.5y minus 0.5y cube right this is a function that means the velocity is changing as a function of y so that is why as you go on increasing or changing the y the vx component is also changing that is the velocity gradient and if you carefully see this is approaching the free velocity okay free velocity or you can say the maximum velocity whatever it is so because it's achieving uh, the free velocity above this particular value anywhere you find the same you know v infinity or the free stream velocity that means the velocity gradient which you are talking is only for you know small uh, length i can say okay or a small distance this velocity gradient can actually be observed in a very small region just above the surface and that particular uh, distance you can see that because you know over the plate the fluid will form flow so what happens it forms a boundary layer or you can say the length or the layer within which you can observe a velocity gradient is called a boundary layer okay and this particular width or you can say the thickness is called the boundary layer thickness you can see this delta i already marked here that is my boundary layer thickness okay so now how to calculate it so two things are clear one why this velocity gradient and uh, what is boundary layer theory so boundary layer theory explicitly mention you these two conditions number one the no slip condition number two you have a boundary layer um, forming over here okay so now how to calculate this and because because the maximum velocity is attained here you don't have any shear stress okay always remember wherever you have a velocity gradient you get to see a shear stress within the fluid so what is the formula i hope you remember tau is equal to mu into dv by dy in this case right that means along y axis right there is a velocity gradient and because of this particular velocity gradient there is something called as the shear stress generated okay i hope you are slowly remembering how the concept of viscosity okay so this is how the concept of viscosity was initially studied okay so tau shear stress would be there when there is a velocity gradient but if at all uh, i was telling right out of this boundary layer there is no uh, what do we say velocity gradient correct there is no velocity gradient if there is no velocity gradient i can say shear stress is equal to zero simple right shear stress is equal to zero so now what do we want to calculate we just want to calculate tau how can i calculate it that means so let's say at x equal to x1 this is the delta and I, as i you know as we know as we are approaching the boundary layer tau is equal to zero so just put this value over here so maybe i'll write over here so in this region above delta or just you know along the boundary layer you can say tau equal to zero okay so therefore 
so what I can write dv x by dy will also be equal to 0 this is what we will be using so we know uh, d by dy of vx is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 times 3 by square correct I just differentiated this condition right so now if you carefully do what you are getting you are getting y square is equal to 1 by 3 this is what we will get y square is equal to 1 by 3 and from here you can easily get the value of y okay let us see how much is the value okay so if you just do this you will be getting y to be equal to 0.57 okay so the answer would be 0.57 what is y y is nothing but the delta over here right at x equal to x1 y is equal to delta and we know that this is what you have calculated so you have got the answer as 0.57 so using this you can easily uh, you know with the help of the boundary layer theory you can easily calculate the thickness of the boundary layer the boundary layer thickness okay so i hope this video helped you to understand the basic fundamental concept behind how to go about this question and the boundary layer theory so that's it from my side we'll meet you again in one more video but before that i wanted to ask you guys so please comment down whatever concepts that you wanted to make whatever you know problems that you are facing so that maybe i get to know it and if at all if i could simplify it i'll definitely put my efforts into that so that's it from my side guys we'll meet you again in one more video until then keep preparing all the best stay safe bye guys